it's been a while since I made this video and I just finished a new free downloadable cheat sheet with all of the tips that were in that video plus a couple of extras. So just tap the link in the description if you want it. But I felt like it was definitely time to create another shortcut quick tips video. So I've got seven new ones to share with you today. Now, many of these are tips that will help you be more efficient and streamline your workflow. However, please don't think I just went on the internet looking for general shortcuts thinking, oh, jumping from artboard to artboard, that's a cool shortcut. Nah, these are actually shortcuts that I use or have used for fashion design specific tasks. And like I did in the last video, I'm gonna show you some examples so they don't seem completely obscure. So let's jump right in. Tip number one, creating custom shortcuts. I mentioned this in the last video and I also made a previous video specifically about how to do this, but I wanna reiterate that you can customize any shortcut for any function, tool, or panel in Illustrator. So any shortcuts I show in today's video or in the previous video can be revised so that the keyboard button or buttons you tap work for you. Tip number two, customize your workspace. If you click on this icon in the upper right corner, you'll get a list of default Illustrator workspaces that you can use. And usually, at least for me, Essentials is fine. But if there are panels, even tools that you like to use and don't wanna have to go to the window menu to bring them up, you may even like them positioned in a particular area on your page or certain things docked together you can create and save your own workspace. Here's how to do it. Open and arrange all of the panels and tools that you like to use in the workspace. Make sure they're arranged exactly how you want them down to the positioning. Click the icon and choose new workspace. Name it. And now your new setup appears in the list of Illustrator workspaces. What's nice about this is if you ever switch to a different workspace, say you switch to Essentials or someone else uses your computer and switches your workspace, you can easily get it back to your preferred workspace by selecting it in the list. You can also clean up and quickly reset your workspace in case you move things around or close some of your panels. Tip number three, customize your tools panel. If you've been using Illustrator for a while now, you'll notice that the tools panel has gone through quite a few changes. Adding tools, losing tools, adding some back. There were tools that I really loved that are no longer part of the default set. But the cool thing about the tools panel now is that you can customize it and make it whatever you want it to be. If you click on the three dots at the bottom of the tools panel to edit the toolbar, you'll see all of Illustrator's tools. The ones that are a little more grayed out are the ones that are currently showing in the tools panel. And if you hover over them, the tool will highlight in the panel. The ones that are white are the tools that are currently not in the tools panel. But if you want them there, you can drag them into the panel. If you wanna make a tool part of a tear off, drag it on top of the tool you want it docked with. Similarly, to remove it from the tools panel, drag it out of the panel and onto the artboard. Just keep in mind that if you do want to remove a tool, you need the edit toolbar open. Just trying to drag a tool out of the tools panel without that toolbar open won't work. Tip number four, no color and swapping colors. Most people know that the red strike through means no color and it's located at the bottom on the, of the tools panel and in the lower left corner of the color panel. But a quick way to change your fill or stroke color to none is by pressing the backslash. Also, how many times have you clicked on a color and it added a fill color when what you really wanted to do was to add it to the stroke? Well, the first shortcut I have for that is pressing the letter X will swap the position of the fill and stroke boxes. 
Whichever box is to the foreground is the one you'll be affecting when you choose a color. So if the fill box is to the foreground when what you really need is the stroke box, just press X to swap them. But say you've already added your color and you realize that you put the color you wanted in the wrong box. In that case, pressing Shift X will swap the position of the colors in the fill and stroke boxes. I actually use that one pretty often. Tip number five, saturate or desaturate a color. Many times when I'm working on a graphic or a print, I want a tone of the color. If you're using global process or spot colors, it's pretty simple to get a lighter tone of the color using the tint slider. But if you want a darker tone, or if you're not using global process colors, here's how you can do it. Select the color you wanna change, then press and hold the shift key while moving the slider in the color palette. The slider you choose to move will saturate or desaturate the color and bring out more of the color you're sliding. For instance, on this flower, I'm using CMYK sliders. When I use this trick sliding the cyan slider, you can see that the color becomes a darker tone of the original pink, but it has more of a blue tone. If I do the same thing with the magenta slider, the color is very similar, but it has a bit more of a magenta red tint to it. So it really just comes down to the look you want for that more saturated or desaturated color. But ultimately, it's a great way to create a tone of your color without having to manually mix it. Tip number six, select and deselect. This one I've used for years, and it's one of the first shortcuts I teach in my beginner illustrator classes. It's also my favorite of the seven tips. And it works when you're using any tool in Illustrator, but I use it most often when I'm sketching with the pen tool. If you're drawing a flat sketch and you need to stop drawing, say you've drawn your out of shape and now you need to draw the inner style lines, you'll want to detach from that shape you've been drawing so you can start a new line. There's a few ways you can detach your pen tool from your existing drawing. The first way is to just press P, which is the shortcut for the pen tool. You can also press enter and both are valid options, but they both leave the object you just drew selected. And if I want to add style lines to my drawing, I need the existing shape to be deselected. Otherwise I'll start adding points to the shape, which I don't want to do. So what I do is press and hold the command or control keys, command for Mac, control for windows. That key toggles to a selection tool, the black or white arrow, whichever one you use last. Then you can click anywhere in the page, but not on the sketch to detach and deselect. Then when you let go of the command or control key, the tool switches back to the pen tool. I've used this shortcut for years and it keeps my sketching simple and seamless. And finally, tip number seven, make thumbnail layers bigger. Using Illustrator often can take a toll on your eyesight. So one of the first things I talk about with all of my students is finding ways to make the experience of using the program less strenuous on your eyesight. There's actually quite a few things you can do, but one of them involves making the icons bigger. You can't do this for everything, but a few of my students have asked about how to make the thumbnails in the layers bigger. And I never thought about it, but the default size is kind of small. So to make the layer thumbnail bigger, go to the hamburger menu and choose panel options. In the row size section, you can choose a small, medium, or large thumbnail. And if the large thumbnail still seems too small, you can also choose other and designate a custom pixel size for your thumbnail. Not only is that a good one for those of us who are getting a little older and our eyesight is aging with us, but if you're visually impaired in any way, it's just one more thing to help you avoid additional eye strain. So those are my latest shortcuts and quick tips. I've already shared with you which is my favorite, so let me know in the comments which of these is yours and which one you'd like to start using first. Thanks for watching today's video. As I mentioned, there's a free downloadable cheat sheet of shortcuts in the description. So be sure to tap that link if you're interested. And if you're new to Illustrator for Fashion Design and want step-by-step -step instruction to show you how to use Illustrator as a fashion designer, make sure you check out the link in the description to my course. Be sure to like, 
comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.